everyone and welcome to a new video MC Mora here and today I wanted to give you a complete guide on how to play Cody what is his character archetype and what you should be doing in the match so what is Cody's archetype Cody in my opinion is a jack of all trades style character he you can think of him as someone like Ryu you will be doing a little bit of everything but you're not the best at anything you're not like a you will never be like the best offense character or the best defensive character or anything like that but you will do a little bit of everything uh, so let's first start to talk about Cody what are his strengths and what are his weaknesses what is he good at and what is he bad at the best thing about Cody is his damage Cody for Street Fighter 5 is a really high damage character as you can see from a combo like that he is doing almost 300 damage 300 damage with one bar grounded in Street Fighter 5 is really high so he have really good damage he have an amazing v-trigger 2 uh, his v-trigger 2 is one of the best v-triggers in the game it's especially good at comebacks he have a really strong way to shut down autopilot offense because of his v skill 2 and we will get to that later uh, he have a really strong anti-air game from the right ranges and again we will get back to that later so you have really good damage you have really good way of shutting down autopilot offense you have really good comebacks and you have a really good way to shut down autopilot so what are his weaknesses what are the issues with Cody the biggest weakness by far with Cody is that he doesn't have a true reversal a DB I mean and he doesn't have a 3 frame Cody's fastest normal is 4 frame and as you know in Street Fighter 5 3 frame is the fastest normal, it's the fastest, well it's the fastest normal a character can have, but he doesn't have that. So his defensive options are relatively weak compared to the rest of the cast. Um, also another big issue with Cody is his back walk speed, and this complements, or sadly, this kind of complements his poor uh, defensive uh, options. The fact that he have a slow back walk and his back dash is very short so if you're in a pinch or if your opponent is really pressuring you it can feel hard to get out and his third issue and this is a little bit annoying is that Cody have a blind spot when it comes to anti-airs so if your opponent jump but you like this and let's make me really do that again as you can see Cody's anti-air whiff so he have a spot like that where he just can't anti-air. You will have to do something like jump back jab or jump back medium. You will have to do a, an, orth an unorthodox anti-air but you will not be get your grounded anti-airs. So now we are going to be talking about Cody's normals and how you are supposed to use each of them. And we are going to start off with his crouching flight punch. His crouching light punch is pretty good, after you do it you are still in throw range so you can throw them after it and on hit it combos into itself 3 times and you can still special cancel and that is not really common in Street Fighter 5 it also combos into his standing light punch and now we will talk about his standing light punch his standing light punch by itself is nothing special, it's plus 3 so you can't even link anything after it but what makes his standing light punch special is that it has this target combo where you do standing light punch four times so the reason this is good is because you can do something like this and that's a very easy combo to do so you do like crouching light punch and standing light punch four times in a row if you do or if you're holding down when you're doing the target combo you will throw them backwards and this is really good if you when you're in the corner so when something like that you can throw them back to the corner so crouching light punch and standing light punch is are both decent now we're going to talk about his crouching light kick his crouching light kick is it's not that special it's four frames it have decent range for a crouching light kick and you can do something like this that is the main purpose really is you want to check people low with it when you're trying to walk back and combo to the light punch and then a ruffian or a special move uh, now we're going to talk about the standing light kick and this is one of Cody's best normals this is absolutely one of Cody's best normals and the reason that standing light kick is so good is because it has so much range and 
it ha it's an amazing whiff punish tool. So let's we'll have uh, Chun Li do something here. Like um, let's have her do that. Yeah, and we will try to whiff punish it with a standing light here. As you can see, it's spitting. Or you can wait her for wave and then do light kick and you will punish. As you can see, it's an excellent wave punish tool. So, standing light kick is an amazing move. Now, let me stop doing that. Also, one thing you have to know about this is that on block, you are still plus three on block. So, even point blank, it's an amazing tool. So it's one of his, it's absolutely one of his best normals when it comes to pressure. It's one of his best normals when it comes to the neutral. So standing light kick is a very good move and I recommend using it a lot. And now we are going to start talking about his mediums. Well, so, well to start we are going to talk about his standing medium punch. Um, his standing medium punch is his longest range uh, cancelable normal. So it is pretty decent to add that. You can always cancel it to a special move. It has a pretty good range. It's 7 frame startup, so the startup is fine. It's a really good book in general, and you can use it also to wave punish your opponent if we had Chun Li doing the same thing. As you can see, we can still get the wave punish. So it's a decent move. It also can be used as a combo filler. It's neutral on block, so as you can see, it's zero on block, so it's not the best to use it like point blank. Point blank, don't be doing this, but it, it's, it can be useful to use in a block string. So if you do something like this, for example, that's fine. So standing medium punch is a good whiff punish, it's a decent poke. And it's a decent combo filler. Even if we actually stop blocking here, it's a good combo filler. Now, then we're going to start to talk about his crouching medium punch. And his crouching medium punch is also a decent whiff punish. And this is something that Cody is generally good at, so whiff punishing. But the best thing about his crouching medium punch is that it is his go to pressure normal. It is one of his go to normal combo roots moves. So you will do some, uh, some stuff like that. It's plus 5 on hit, so you can always get a light kick after it. It's plus 2 on block, so that is pretty okay. It's 6 frame startup, so you will not frame trap 3 frame characters with it. But still, you know, it's still pretty good because you can do a light punch after it. So you can do something like that. We'll have Chun Li do a 3 frame reversal now. And as you can see, you will be able to punish it on uh, block if she did that. We got the recording now, and... As you can see, we will be able to get it. So, crushing the much is a good pressure normal. Uh, it's pretty decent overall. It's... it's crouching medium punch and standing light kick are his, are his go-to pressure normals, basically. That's what you will mostly be doing. It's crouching light punch, standing light kick, and crouching medium punch. That is what you are probably going to be doing the most when you are point blank. Now, then we are going to talk about his crouching medium kick. His crouching medium kick is pretty decent. It's also only it's one of his best low pokes. Cody doesn't have that good of low pokes, but it's okay. And one of the best things about crouching light kick is that it's plus one on block. Now, on 3 frame characters, this doesn't really matter that much because at best you will trade after it. So, this is matchup dependent versus some characters, it's really good versus some others, it's uh, like versus someone like Shan Li, it doesn't matter that much. But one also good thing about this is you can throw after it. So, if you do it, you're still in throw range. So, against characters that you can pressure safely, this is pretty good. And his final medium is his standing medium kick. His standing medium kick is pretty strong. It's a do, it's a good poke. It actually have a very good hitbox, and it's plus three on block. So like his standing light kick and crouching medium, this is an amazing pressure normal. You'll be doing a lot of that, a lot of crouching medium to standing medium, a lot of strings like that. And finally, we are going to start to talk about his heavies. Cody's heavy normals in particular are pretty decent, I think. Uh, one of the best normals is his standing heavy punch. Standing heavy punch is an excellent, excellent anti-air. So if we had Chun Li jump at us now, let's record her doing the jump. So this is a six-frame starter move. It's, it have a really, really, really good hitbox. 
It's a really good vertical hitbox and in general it's an amazing anti-air. It's very reliable so I recommend using it as your primary anti-air mode. Uh, on hit it's special cancelable. It hits twice but only the first hit is special cancelable. So you can only do that. If you do the second hit you will not be able to get your special out. So it's a good combo filler because it combos from cross standing medium kick. It's a really good anti-air. You can use it in full seas. It's a really good pressure move because it is a uh, six frame startup. So something like this with frame traps reframe. And in general, it's a very, very good move. So use it as an anti-air, use it as a combo filler. And some people use it as a whip punish tool, but it's not the best at that. But it's still, you know, it can be used like that. Uh, his second normal or second heavy is his crouching heavy punch. This is good because it is one of his new crush counters. So you can always do that now. Or you can make it even into itself. If you got it to hit like that, you can do a Rufian. It's still special cancelable, so you can see the special cancel and get it. In general, it's a very good crush counter attack. It's gonna be your go to crush counter punish, basically. And yeah, as you can see, you start going for damage. And one of the best things about his crouching heavy is that it is a... It's, it, it's, it's kind of a good low crush attack. So if we had chun -Li doing a crouching medium here... Uh, okay, so we have recording that. As you can see, it's pretty good at beating lows. So it depends on your range, but as you can see, it is pretty decent at doing that. It's gonna depend on your timing and the range, but it's a pretty good at beating lows like her uh, crouching medium kick. So it's really good for that. It's a crush counter move and it's special cancelable, so you can always do like a fireball after or whatever. Now, regarding his heavies, Cody have a sweep. It's an okay sweep. His sweep, it used to be abysmal, it used to have really bad uh, recovery in the previous season, but they buffed it, so now it's kinda decent. On hits, you can dash up and throw them, or you can dash up and pressure. You will have a lot of frame advantage. It's having, it's having okay range. It's not the best. There are much better sweeps than Street Fighter Five, but this is pretty okay. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. And his final normal is his heavy kick. Cody's heavy kick is pretty good. It's, uh, it's, it's minus four on block, so from a close range you can be punished, but it have really good range. And it moves him forward a lot. So what you will see a lot of Cody players doing is walking back and then doing a standing heavy kick. This is something you will see many Cody players doing because your opponent will see you walk back, they will try to walk forward and then bam, you hit him in the face. Try to be careful with using this move because it have a lot of startup. It have a because you move forward, you can be you will be closer to them, so it can be hard to space. And if they neutral jump or anything, you can get punished. The last normal, and that is his command normal, I believe, is his forward heavy kick. This is a this move is decent. You can special cancel it, special cancel the first hit, and the second hit combos into his into his V skill. This will change depending on V skill one or two, but generally it's a it combos into his V skill. It have good range for a heavy. The startup is kind of long, but you know you can still use it as a poke. From decent range. It's a the best thing about it is that if you do the two hit, even on block you're completely safe. So if we have a block here, even that, even point blank from this range, whatever range you are completely safe. Minus two means that you are safe from most things in the game. Like there is very little that can punish you with at that. Uh, of course, if you do the V skill now, you are completely unsafe, but you don't want to V-skill. And that is a very good hit confirm also. You can see the two hit comboing and then doing the V-skill to complete your strain. The last is his overhead. His overhead is his forward heavy punch. This is nothing too special. It's just an overhead. It has decent range for an overhead. The animation is kind of deceptive. So you can use it to, you know, catch your opponent off guard. But it's unsafe on block, so take care of that. So now we are going to be talking about Cody's special moves and how you're supposed to use each of them. And the first one we're going to talk about is his Rufian kick. It is fireball forward with kick or quarter circle forward plus kick. 
and okay, this, this, and that. And what you will need to know about the Ruffian Kicks is the strengths you do will change how the move looks and functions. So his light version will do the low slide, this hits low, and his medium will do the straight kick, and the heavy will do the upwards kick. And each of them have different properties, and these properties are important, and I will tell you now which one you're supposed to use at each situation. Let's start first with the light. Uh, the light hits low, so even in the neutral, even from here, it's a low check. Think of it as something like Bison or Vega sweeps or just lights. It is that style of move. Uh, you can just use it to check out of opponents. Of course, this is very unsafe on block. So I don't recommend using it as a willy-nilly, you know, just throw it out move. One thing you'll have to know about the Light Ruffian is that it gives you the best Oki, or Oki means the best pressure. Basically, it gives you the best follow-up situation. When you do it, you are very close to them. As you can see, if I do the medium kick version, they are a little bit far. The heavy kick version, they are really far but the light leaves me right next to them. So that is the best thing about the light kick Rufian. It does the least damage of the three, it does only 100, as you can see the heavy does 130, the light only does 100, so it, you're doing the least damage, but you are getting in the best situation, because now you can just pressure, now you can just you know, throw them after it, you can do whatever you want in this position. It gives you a really good positional advantage. So the light kick Rufian is what you would want to do if you want to get the best position. Now, what is the issues with the light Rufian? As we can, as we said, it's already unsafe on block. If you, if they blocked it, it's unsafe. And one issue with the light kick Rufian is that it only combos from medium and heavy normals. If you do jab jab light Rufian, this is not a combo. As you can see, it was only to hit because I did the two lights, but the special move didn't link. It only combos from medium and heavy normals. So if you do something like a crouching medium punch to the Rufian, now this is a combo. But this doesn't. So this is something that you'll have to be very careful of. Only cancel into the light Rufian when you are canceling into it from a medium or a heavy normal. Medium or heavies are fine, light will not combo. Now we're going to start to talk about his medium kick Rufian and what are you supposed to do with this? Medium kick Rufian is good because it is middle of the road. It does a it does the middle amount of damage and stun, and the situation after it, while it's not amazing, you still get a dash up and B plus two, so you can get some pressure at this situation. One good thing about the medium kick Rufian is that it combos from everything. Unlike the light, you can combo into from light attacks. You can combo into it from anything, basically. Anything and the medium kick Rufian will, will link, which is very, very good. It also hit mids, and that's pretty decent. On block, it's not that terrible. Uh, let's have Chun Li block if you space it well. As you can see, we're minus 7, which is punishable, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, the light kick Rufian is much more unsafe at minus 8 point blank, while this one, with some spacing, you can get it to be a little bit less unsafe. So it's your go-to with punish into normal and it's your go-to light cancel. If you combo with lights, I recommend doing it. If you are with punishing with something, say medium or light or whatever, it is your best go-to move. And now we are going to talk about his heavy kick Rufian. Heavy kick Rufian does the most damage out of the three. But, uh, and it also combos from everything, like the light, so why would not we use this over the medium? What is the issues with the heavy kick Rufian? Well, the issue, the basic issue with the heavy kick Rufian is that it waves on crouching opponent. So even if she's crouching like that, it will not hit her. So you will have to be very careful when you are cancelling into this. As you can see, if I did the medium, I'm getting the combo. If I do the heavy, it's not, it's waving over her head. So this is pretty dangerous to throw it out there because of that. And it is also not that amazing in regarding to Oki because you are bringing them far away. As you can see if we turn on the frame advantage. Uh, on dash you are still pretty far, you will not be able to, you are not, not in slow range after this basically, that's the main issue. 
So it's a good for the damage. It's the best one when you want to do damage. In the corner, it's fairly good, but otherwise, it's you know. I would recommend using the medium over it until you are able to hit confirm whether they are standing or blocking. One important thing that you have to note is that uh, this is also a really good anti-air. So when they are jumping at you, uh, let's say you suddenly jump at this distance from them. Heavy Kick Rufian, you can use it as an anti-air. It doesn't have any invincibility, but the hitbox is pretty decent. So you can use this as an anti-air from afar, or you can use it as a combo filler, but be careful because it will wave on crouching opponents. So now we are going to talk about his EX Rufian kick. The EX Rufian kick hits low, it's in, on a startup it's a lot like his light one that you, can, you can't even combo it from lights, it only combos from mediums or heavies. But the special thing about it is that it's a launcher, so you will get a juggle after it. So after the EX Rufian you can do a heavy kick Rufian, a medium or a light. And the same rules apply. If you do the light after it, you still get the best Oki or the best position. If you do the heavy, you're doing the most damage. So you will have to assess the situation here and see which one you want. Do you want to go for the best position or do you want to go for the most damage? And now we are going to be talking about his second move and that is the Zonk Knuckle. Uh, Zonk Knuckle is done by holding a punch button and then let it go of the punch button. You have to hold it about, I'll say about half a second. So you have to hold the button for about half a second and then when you release, the attack comes out. Zonk is really good because it is plus three on hit, so you can throw range, you can throw them afterward, you can hit them out if they try to move or jump, you can, if they try to whiff a throw, you can then you know, shimmy them and get the combo. So it puts you in a really, really good position. It combos from mediums and it combos from heavies, so you can always get that from medium and heavies. On light, it's not going to combo, so if you do something like that, yeah, that's not gonna combo. The best thing about Zonk Knuckle also is that it is safe on block, so if you had Chun Li block here, uh, you'll find that the move is completely safe. It's minus two. So, what are the uses of regular Zonk? Why would you like to use that move? The best thing about Zonk Knuckle is that it's really good as a frame trap. So if you do something like say we will have her mash a jab or something. So she will do a light attack now. Chun Li will be blocking, and on, after block she will do a light attack. As you can see, right. So the good thing about e regular Zonk is that you can use it as a frame trap. So if you do something like this, as you can see, we got the counter hit, and on counter hit. You are plus five, so you are getting a combo. So they can, if they if they try to mash or they try to challenge, and you are doing the zonk attack, you are be you're gonna be able to counter hit them and get the combo. As you can see. Now, one thing extra that you have to know about zonk knuckle is that zonk have multiple level of charge. So if you hold the button for five seconds, now we are holding light for five seconds. Let's have Chun Li not block because I want to show you this. You you will see Cody say haha and the screen shake and all of that. And this is called a level two zone. This was a new change that was added in season three. And what level two zone does is it allows you to combo after it on hit. So Cody is now plus five on hit. So you can get a follow up normally without having to get the counter hit. Regularly you have to get a counter hit to be able to combo after it, but with the level 2 zone, you will get the combo regardless. And if you want to know how you get the level 2 zone, you will notice a screen shake and the voice line is different. It has the same uses and on block, level 2 zone is also minus 2, so in block is not any different, on hit it is pretty significantly different. And now let's talk about the EX zone. And how you're supposed to use it. EX Zonk is done by holding two punch buttons. You can do the light and the medium, the medium and heavy, the heavy and light, it doesn't matter as long as you're holding two punch buttons for the 30 frames or half a second. Now EX Zonk is probably one of the best moves in the game and that is because it does almost everything. 
a combo from lights, so you can do, if you, even if you're going blank, you can do something like that, you can do three lights and you still get a combo. If it puts you in a very good position, you dash twice and you're still in throw range after it. It will combo from literally anything, from lights, from mediums, from whatever. And the best thing about EX Zonk is on block it is plus 3 on block. So as you can see, it is plus 3 on block. Plus 3 on block means that if Shan Li tried to challenge like he did here, you will get a counter. So that is really, really good. The one thing that you have to know about this though is you are plus 3 on block, but you are not in throw range. So if you try to throw after it, you are a little bit further out. And another thing is, you, you can't even shake them low if they try to walk back. So while you are get a plus three situation, it's still not as amazing as you can think. However, a really big side to EX Zonk is that it is his only special move that you can B trigger cancel from. So you can do something like this. As in activate B trigger. Or even on hit, you still get a combo after it. So, in that regard, EX Zonk is a very good all-purpose move, really. You can throw it out in the neutral, it has decent range, it, it combos from everything, it puts you in a great OP situation, it's plus on block. EX Zonk is the GOAT of Cody moves. And one thing that you have to know is just like level, uh, just like the regular Zonk, EX also has a level 2 Zonk, and it also combos in the same way. You will see the voice line is different, there is a screen shake, he will say Zonk Knuckle. You have to hold two buttons for about five seconds and this is dangerous. A lot of Cody players like to hold level 2 EX Zonk. I don't like to hold it too much because you are giving up two moves for five seconds, which are significant in fighting games. And you will have to really think about which two you are giving up because if you give up the lights, you are not be able to throw. If you give up the mediums, you lose your V skill. And if you give up the heavy, typically you are losing your anti air normal. Uh, so you'll have to give it a lot of thought about which one you want to use. And I don't recommend holding EX2 zone too much, but you know, the, the, the EX or the level 2 EX one. Regular EX zone is about 30 seconds, so that's fine. You can, you can hold it like easily. One thing, last thing I want to talk about, and this is for beginners, be, uh, and that is it's important to mask that you are holding an EX zone or holding zone in general. Uh, it's one of the better things that you will have to get good at. And I will show you a couple of ways that you can do this. You'll see a lot of players doing something like this. Uh, they will throw, like, if I, I, I will show, turn on that he's playing now, they will throw, like, a fireball. And as you see, I, I held, I did only one light button. I did the punch button once, and as I'm throwing the fireball, I'm still holding some light punch. My opponent doesn't know that I'm holding it now, so when I can, when I hit him with it, I can still get it out. Another thing, I will, I will throw a fireball and hold two buttons. And now when I release him, I'm getting a zone. Some players will do this with a throw. And why are they whiffing a throw? Well. First of all, they are faking the fireball and then they are also holding zone. So you can do it in a lot of ways. You can do it mid animation. So let's say you are throwing Shan Li. Now you are holding light. You let it and it's going to come out. You do a Rufian and now you are holding zone. So it's always, you can remember this. You can hold the button at any time, even during cinematics. So if I'm doing super here with Cody, as you can see, I'm still holding my light punch button. And when, I, when the super is over... And now finally you are going to be talking about Cody's last special move and that is his fire moves, uh, the tornado sweep. So it has three strengths, you have the light version, the medium version and the heavy version. And what you need to know is the light travels the furthest, so the light goes the furthest, the most distance as you can see. The medium is middle of the road and the heavy stops kind of mid-screen. In general, Cody, Cody's fireball is not a it's not a very good zoning fireball. Think of it as a, a little bit of a worse version of Guy uh, Light Punch Sonic Boom. It's used mainly for you to follow after it and gain some ground. You can zone some of the big body characters with it, 
but it has such long startup and such long recovery. And you can use it to hang in the fireball wars, but it's not that amazing as a zoning technique. It's still usable, but there, is a, there are a lot better ones out there. And now I'm going to be talking about uh, the EX one. And the EX Fireball is really, really good though. EX Tornado Sweep is a slow moving fireball. This is like a Guile Light Punch Sonic Boom. You will use it and then you will follow after it and you use that to gain ground. So if we had Chun Li here do her uh, EX Fireball. Chun Li's EX Fireball is two hits. So what you can do with Cody is. The EX Tornado Sweep has a 3 hits fireball durability, so you will go through 3 hits of fireball. It will cancel out 3 hits of fireball. It's slow moving, so you can use it to gain some ground. Another thing regarding his EX Tornado Sweep is on block, it is plus 2 on block. So let's have the pin data on. And as you can see, it's still plus 2 on block, and you are in throw range. So in the corner, you can do something like this and you're still in the throw range and can combo after it. So maybe if you got them cornered, you can do a front trap like that and then go for the throw. If you even try to mash or do anything, they are getting thrown. Another use for Cody's fireballs in general is you have to use it in, in block strings. So you will do stuff like that. And the idea is it's, it's trapping basically because the fireball, they can jump over that or they can try to do a move. But if they do a jump or try to move, the Zonk will hit them out of it. So let's, for example, have Chun Li. Um, let's have Chun Li try to jump after our. Uh, let's have Chun Li try to jump after our fireball because I wanted to show you what is gonna happen. So typically what we're doing now is we are going to do a fireball sequence and you should be able to jump that. So that is kind of that's kind of bad, right? Now how does this work with the zonk? Well if you don't do the fireball, you will hit her grounded. So that is basically a little bit of the mix and how Cody's block string works. If you do you can do the fireball to base the jump, or you can do the uh, an empty thing. You don't do anything. The heavy tornado will catch her grounded, but the, the zonk will always catch her grounded. So you either end your block string with zonks, empty your or empty cancel your block string and don't commit to anything, or do the fireball. And it's kind of a mix that they have to, you know, guess what you're going to do. Try to mix it up as much as you can and not get predictable with it. Another final note I wanted to talk about and that is his EX Fireball, it's plus 4 on hit, so you can get combos after it. In the corner you can do something like this and you'll still be able to combo after it. This is like, a, like this I'm doing here is, is a typical like corner combo. So use the Fireball slightly for zoning, you can use it to gain ground, Some, something of a combat technique is doing this, is doing a Fireball and then holding an EX Zonk. And using the fireball as a basically as a way to guarantee that your opponent is locked down so that you can get the EX Zonk out there safely. So you can use it in block strings, you can use it in combos, you can use it to zone not that good, and more importantly, you can use it to follow with an EX Zonk after it. So now I'm going to talk about Cody's V skill. Well, as you know, in Street Fighter 5 now every character has two V skills. Cody's V skill one is this attack. It's his double kick from Final Fight, and this kick is you can consider it to be a meterless DP. It's a one potential you can basically, but a meterless one because you will not. If your opponent hits you meaty, you will still get hit out. But what is this? What is this good for? Well, it's a good anti-air for starter. So if we had can we jump here? You will find that it is really good at, at, as an anti-air. If she is kind of jumping and I do my V skill, you will beat it because this is invincible. But the main purpose of using this V skill is dealing with stuff that is barely reactable. So if she did uh, the EX dive kick like that, you can do this late and get anti-air and stuff like that. But your V skill one will be very reliable. So, very skill one is very easy to use, it's very straightforward, 
you just hit the two buttons and you get a meterless DB. Now there is a cost to this and you have to be very aware of the cost. Now as you can see, every time Kud is doing it, he is taking white health. And he gets hit once, you get hit once and all that health is gone. So don't get too trigger happy with V skill 1. It is a pretty easy anti-air, it's a pretty easy move to use in general, it's a one button shuriken, but be careful with it, because getting too reckless with this can cost you a lot. It's just 80 damage to your opponent, 40 damage to you, So and you don't get that much in terms of situational advantage and OP. You do get like a check and it's gonna depend on the height the attack hits from, but still not really something reliable or amazing. So Viscal 1 is amazing, but be careful and use it only when you really need it. And now we are going to talk about Cody and his Viscal 2. And if you remember earlier I said that Cody is... One of the highlights of Cody is that you can't autopilot offense versus him. And the reason of that is because of his Viscal 2. It is this way, this way is a dodge mechanic pretty much. It allows you to dodge attacks and the, there is two variants, there is the high variant and there is the low variant. So of course this depends on the position that the opponent gets the move from, not if the move itself is a low or a high. And the punch or the standing follow-up has a punch follow-up and the light one has a kick follow-up. So this and this. And the punch follow-up from the standing position also can be special cancelled, so you can do something like this. So even on the dodge you are getting good damage. Now why is this good? Because let's have Bison here doing something like this. Typically that plus is plus on block. So Bison can continue his pressure. But with the dodge you can now punish it or you can make it punish, you can make it whiff and then you get your punish. You've turned Bison pressure against him. And that's why I was saying that you cannot really autopilot versus Cody because this way allows you to call out offense from your opponent. Now, be noted that it is risky if you are, if you do the empty sway or if you mistime it, you are in a counter hit state. So if you mistime this way and didn't do anything or they did it late, or you or you try to sway the wrong direction, say so like. They did a sweep and you were swaying high, you will get crush counter, right? So be careful of that. And also note that it is unsafe on block. So point blank, if you did this, you are minus seven. This is minus six. It is a common strategy among Koti players to use the K because this have a good range actually. So you can do this from max range and from minus six at this range, it's hard to punish you. So Cody's V skill 2 is a very good V skill, I would recommend using it. The one thing I would like you to know about Cody and his V skill 2 is that it does need you to have a good amount of game sense and a good amount of matchup knowledge. V skill 1 you can just use it on reaction to anything, V skill 2 is good for that also but you have to know what you're looking out for because if you do something and the, the thing you try to sway it have really fast recovery, you might get blocked. It's also really good to use as a bait for reversals. So if we have Bison reversal here, let's record him doing reversal. There's a lot of options. The Viscal 2 opens up a lot of doors for Cody. So let's have him doing a reversal now. Okay. I think this is kind of you can dodge it and still hit him. So V skill 2 opens up a ton of doors for Cody, but it's a bit more technical than V skill 1. So if you're just starting out with Cody and you're still getting the hang of the basics and of the game, I would recommend using V skill 1 more. But when you are more mature and already know what you're looking out for, V skill 2 is probably a better option overall. And there is also some matchup dependency because versus some characters you are better off using V-Skill 1 still. So take it as you will, both V-Skills are amazing, you can't go wrong with either of them. One is straightforward, easy, reliable, but have a serious drawback. Two is a better, it offers a lot more in terms of variety, it gives you an anti-zoning tool, it gives you a lot of options and legs. 
A lot of play around, honestly, and it allows you to stop autopilot, but you need to know what you're looking out for. Either way, you can't go wrong with either. So, now we're going to be talking about his V-Triggers, and the first V-Trigger we're going to talk about is his V-Trigger 1, it is the knife. What is the idea behind the knife? Well, the idea is that the knife gives you better normals. So, if we were, for example, talking about his uh, crouchy medium punch, it's plus 2, doesn't leave you in throw range. Well, the knife medium punch is plus 4, so you double the advantage, and you're in throw range. Uh, the heavy bunch typically have this amount of range, the knife heavy bunch goes so far. So you get more plus frames, you get a bigger range of normals, you also get this new move, the rabbit slash, and the rabbit slash is plus on block. On hit you will get a really cool looking attack, and on block you will get plus frames, so it's really really good. Now, you also get the knife toss, and if you just press the heavy kick and heavy punch together, or the V-trigger button, I mean, you will throw the knife. And this is good because it doesn't follow the typical projectile's rules, so if your opponent have an attack that ducks under fireball or go through fireball, they can't do that versus the knife. So it's pretty decent, it's also pretty fast, kinda hard to react to, so might not be a bad idea to throw it out. Also, one thing that you have to know is you can throw the knife at any time. And this is important, because let's say you want to uh, do a particular combo, so or you want to return and have your fireball back, you can do that, you can just throw the knife, and when you want to use it again, you can just press the V-trigger again and reload it. So you get better normals, and you can switch it on and off at any time you want. That is a benefit, and we will get to that later. But for now, the knife is really good at making your neutral better. You get better normals, better range, some really cool combo extensions, and you get the ability to turn it on or off whenever you want. And now we are going to be talking about Cody's V Trigger 2, the Dirty Coach or the Pipe, as people call it. This V Trigger is honestly one of the best V Triggers in the game. And that's for multiple reasons and we'll start discussing what does the pipe gives you so to start the pipe gives you better range on your heavy normals so only the heavy are different with the pipes the light and the mediums are the same but the heavy bunch becomes this long range attack this is also a crutch counter so it's a pretty good as that we have you also get a crouching heavy punch and this normal is excellent crouching heavy punch is a good anti-air it's not the best but it's a decent anti-air but it have a lot of horizontal range and it's really good at checking forward movement so from this range if you think they're gonna dash if you think that maybe they will do like a forward moving attack the crouching heavy punch is very good at stopping that now you also get the swings Swing is done by pressing the V-Trigger button, and the best thing about the swing is you can use it to cancel any normal. So any normals that you can do, even if it's not cancelable, into specials, you can cancel into the swing. So something like the sweep, and then swing. Crouching medium punch, or medium kick, and then swing. Heavy kick, and then swing. You can do the target combo. And then swing. And the beauty of this is it makes everything safe. So this, for example, normally is minus 13 on block. Now with the swing, you can make this minus 2. Of course, there is a gap there that they can exploit, but you get the basic idea. This is also become safe. This becomes safe. This becomes safe. It's very good in that. It doesn't actually consume that much B trigger as well. And on combo, you get a better follow up. So if you do something like a target punch. Or let's say, let's talk about the target combo first. If you do something like this, you are doing 140, well, let's say 150 damage. With the swing, you get about 200. You get 200 damage. So it also adds to your damage. Same with the zonk. You can cancel this into the swing now. You don't want to do that specifically, and we'll get to why, but uh, just know that you can cancel into the swing. You can also cancel the, there's also an upward swing. And the upper swing, it doesn't function that differently from the normal swing, but you can cancel from one, from the upward to the normal. So you can do something like this. 
uh, or even with uh, something grounded like this you can get this upward swing to the normal swing so you're just adding a bit more damage there now one of the better things about this V trigger is that it gives him a a fireball reflect basically so if you had Chun Li here doing an EX fireball what you will see is with the swing you will be able to cancel or reflect back the fireball as you can see you can reflect the fireball and give it back to return it to Chun Li and this is really really good because what you need to know is in this uh, V trigger when Cody has a pipe you cannot throw fireballs. Your regular tornado is gone. And unlike the knife, you can't put down the pipe. So this is the key thing that you have to remember. You can just throw the knife and get your fireballs back, but you can do so with the pipe. You will have to rely on your reflect. So what does he get in place of the fireball? He gets the stones. And the stones are special because it's a two part, think of it as a two part special move. So when you when you're just throwing it out there like this, it have a hitbox. You can also cancel this from any move. So you can do like a heavy kick into the stone. This is done by a fireball backwards, fireball back and punch, and you get the stone like this. So this is really good because it's kind of obnoxious. Because if if, if you try to jump, they get hit. If they try to do any follow ups or cut close to you, you might get the trade. You can cancel it from any normal. Why is this good? It's good for a basic concept of this. You do something like a sweep and now you meet him with a, with a rock. And this allows you to pressure them on wake up even better. As you can see, if you try to do anything, you will get a combo. Now, the rock also does more than that. When you throw the rock, you can do the swing. And if you swing upwards, the rock will go upwards. If you swing directly, that rock will go directly. And there are multiple timings to this. If you do it early, Cody will throw it upwards, like that. If you do it perfectly, Cody will throw it out there. And this is three hitting fireball. This does a ton of damage. And if you do the late version, I find the late version to be the hardest one to actually get out. But if you do the late one, it is a, it does it's not a low, but it goes under fireballs. So. If you just do the regular swing, you are doing a vertical or horizontal fireball. If you do the upward swing, you will throw it out there. And depending on the, the strength of the rock that you did, whether it's light, medium, or heavy, the distance is different. So if you go and do a light toss, it will drop right next to you. Medium is halfway, heavy is full screen. And there are a ton of setups regarding this. I don't want to get too deep into the setups and what you're supposed to be doing, but just know that this is the cornerstone of Cody's V-Trigger. Now, an important thing that you also have to know with Cody is how do you activate V-Trigger? What are the best V-Trigger activations? And the best are EX Zonk, and the best are his target combo. You can either activate from the target combo, or you activate from the EX Zonk, usually these are your best activations. You can also do from Sweep, you can do from Heavy Kick, there are multiple ones that are decent, but typically you will do from Target Combo, or EX Zonk, or a Sweep, or Standing Heavy Kick. Now, another thing that you have to get, and this is the biggest element as to why Cody's V-Trigger 2 is amazing, the most contributing factor, and that is Cody gets a Command Grab. And Cody's command grab is like the rock toss. It also has three versions. If you do it early, that happens. You don't get an amazing situation there. You do 100, 140 damage, 150 stun. It's not awful, but it's not that amazing. If you do it too late, you get 140, 150. Also, so it's not that special. Like if you do it too late or if you do it too early, it's not that amazing. But if you get the correct timing, hopefully I'll get it here from the first time. Nope. If you get the correct timing, you are doing 220 damage and 300 stun. This does as much damage and stun as Zangief EXSBD. And you get that meterless in V Trigger. So you get an EXSBD basically, which is awesome. And the one thing that you need to know is you can also lose this. So 
like something like that, and it's it's awesome. Cody's ten Cody's command grab in V trigger is the best thing about his V trigger, and it's one of the it's absolutely one of the best command grabs in the game. Now this one needs some practice to get it consistently, and what you want to do is. At least what I used to did is to listen to the audio cue and when he say let's have some fun you wait for a little bit like even less than a second and then do a punch button and this is how you get it of course it's, it will need some training it can be hard to get online but with some practice you'll be able to get it every time it's, it's kinda it's not that bad uh, now why is this command grab scary? Not only you do get the damage, you also get an amazing setup afterwards. Because if you do the command grab, you can always be scared of what's coming next. And you can do a lot of stuff, so if you do something like this, this is just like a day one uh, setup. You do the rocks, three jabs, and you still get the combo. And as you can see with that, that stun. You can see, we almost killed her in two command grabs or a command grab and a setup. So as you can see, the command grab is very potent. It's a very, very, very dangerous tool. And it leads to a very scary, okay situation. And the good thing about Cody is he can get into that position because of the zonk. Remember when we told you that the zonk leaves you in slow range? It is the same thing. If you do that zone, you're still in the command grab range. So whenever you activate V trigger, let's say you did this, now you're in command grab range. You can do something like this, or zone, and now you get the command grab, and you can kill them from sequence like that. Or if you do something like a ruffian, so we can say you can do something like that. They wake up and. They get command grab and now they have to guess. It's a very strong command grab and it is the reason that this V-Trigger is very powerful. So this V-Trigger not only does it give you a meaty that's easy to use, it gives you a fireball reflect, it gives you some tool to make a uh, special move safe, it gives you some tool to uh, basically bully your way in with the EX uh, or the upward toss. It only gives you probably one of the best command grabs in the game. Now, the issue with Cody's command grab, what you have to be aware of, is it doesn't have that much range. As you can see, the range is really, really short. You have to be like super close to get it. So, v Cody's V Trigger 2, there are a ton of setups out there. There are a ton of things that you can do with this. And one final thing that I wanted to tell you, or I wanted to show you rather, is. It's actually a decent anti-air. There are a lot of options where you can do some amazing stuff with this when it comes to an anti-air potential. So with the upward swing, you can do something like this. And as you can see, you are doing insane damage from an anti-air. So Cody's V-Trigger 2 is awesome. There are a ton of setups. I will send you a link. I'll leave a link below to a lot of the setups and what you can do. And it's an amazing V-Trigger. You will need to lab it a little bit, you will need to know what you're doing to get a good value out of it. But it is an awesome, awesome V-Trigger. So now we are going to talk about Cody's anti-air game and the jumping games. First let's talk about his anti-airs. And Cody have a bunch of anti-air normals. So let's have a jump here and... Your first anti-air and probably the best one is his standing heavy punch. Uh, it's six frame startup, so it's really fast. It has really good hitbox and it's very reliable at dealing with forward jumps. As you can see, it's beating it every single time. It's a very good anti-air, so I would recommend using it. Another thing that you can anti-air with, which is pretty reliable for the most part, but don't get too happy with it, is V Skill One. V Skill One is pretty good at stopping jumps. Especially forward jumps and yeah, it's a really good one, but take care that you are taking gray hills when you are using this. Another one is the Heavy Kick Ruffian. Heavy Kick Ruffian is good at dealing, far, uh, dealing with far jumps and dealing with jumps at a distance if you are neutral jumping. So if we had chun -Li here do a neutral jump, let's say from this distance, Heavy Kick Ruffian is really good. 
from range like that, it can be really really good. Because a lot of people will try to bait your heavy kick and forward heavy kick from this range, so know that you can do a heavy kick with you. Now, one final anti air, and that one is pretty, you know, you will need it in very specific situations, and that is his jump back medium bunch. So, as we said before, Cody have a blind spot that you will not be able to anti air from. So the best answer to that is this one, the jump medium punch. His jumping medium punch is good at dealing with that style of range. And there is a target combo to it where you do jump medium heavy and it's not that consistent but it is a good answer to uh, jumps. You can also do jumping jab but it's jumping jab or jumping medium. So overall standing heavy, V skill 1, heavy kick ruffian or jump back uh, medium. Now, in regards to jumping in an opponent, could he have a could he have some interesting suite of jumping options? Jumping medium kick is your cross up. It's a pretty decent cross up now. It used to be kind of whack, but now it's pretty decent. Jumping heavy punch and heavy kick are both alright. Heavy kick have a little bit more uh, horizontal range, but a heavy punch kind of stuffs. It have a better angle. From my experience, jumping heavy bunch have a better angles than jumping heavy kick. But jumping heavy kick because of the vertical range or horizontal range makes it kind of tricky to use as a jumping. So it's, both of these are really good. And one thing that you is kind of underexplored is his jumping target combo. So could you have a jumping medium kick, light kick target combo? And one very interesting thing about this is it has the most frame advantage of all of his jumps. So his jumping heavy kick regularly and jumping heavy bunch, they have enough frame advantage but you can't shimmy backwards. So like if you jump and try to shimmy, more often than not you will get thrown. But jumping medium kick, uh, light kick have the most frame advantage. So if you're going for a shimmy, this is the best and even it does still lead to good damage output on hits. It gives you a really good advantage overall. So other than that, he have a lot of his jump. Other jump normals are targeted towards, uh, you know, this this hits a bonus to the above you. So it might be useful in some very niche situations. But yeah, if you're jumping in, jumping medium is your cross up. Jumping heavy kick or heavy punch for jumping forward and jumping target combo to deal with armor and get the most frame advantage on your jumping. So before I leave you to some combos and setups, I wanted to show you and talk about his super. Uh, his super is likely use its double quarter circle forwards and punches. It's basically his tornado upper from the older games. Uh, it's pretty decent, it's 7 frame startup so it's decently fast, you can punish some stuff with that. It have a high hitbox so it will anti-air people from the light ranges. It's also a very good combo ender because it will link from anything as you can see from Zonk, even from the target combo. But this scales so much so I don't recommend it. So overall it's a really good super. One amazing thing about Cody is that his super actually links from his standing medium kick. So you can do something like that. Even in like even from this range, for example, if you get the standing medium kick, you can do a super and you will get the link. You will get it to link. That will actually combos. You can even get it twice, and you will still be able to get the combo. So it is a pretty decent super. It has a lot of functionality. Sadly, it's not as cool looking as some of his older supers in the older games, but it still has a lot of functionality. So with that, I won't now leave you with some combos and setups. I hope you enjoy watching and please if you like this tutorial and want to see more stuff like that, please like, comment or subscribe, it all really really helps and thank you for watching.
Thank you. 